All right, so this has four elements so far. This background sky, I'm going to use this NASA photograph of, I think it's the Oort cloud, but of a different kind of galaxy configuration in the sky. But I need at least five major elements. So along with the rock, I think these kind of weird tall mushrooms, especially if I kind of force their scale to be almost like big trees, I'm going to use this as my fifth element in this composition. And so where do I put those mushrooms? I'm going to sketch them in right here. And then if I want, I can use my eraser. Or better yet, I'll just use my brush. And just paint out where those mushrooms will be. And then this will be number five. Now, we want to make sure you can identify your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. Three layers of depth. Then I'm going to save my sketch. And now, I can try it as a horizontal format, right? So let's see, what if I want those mushrooms? Maybe I want those in the same kind of place. So it's going to start because they're nice and mossy. Mushrooms are right here in the foreground. They're going to take up quite a bit of space. They're a nice big element. I might even do a slightly nicer sketch here, but I don't need to. I really just need the puzzle piece. I'll thicken that. So that's going to be number five mushrooms. Let's use the number. Then do I want the rock and the pool? I think I do. I'm going to push the rock a little bit smaller. Push it over here. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. Right? And then that pool, and then there's going to be some rocks behind it. So that is number one. All making sense so far? Got mushrooms and rocks. Now do I want to use that temple? I'm not sure I do in this. I might want to use something more foresty. Let's see. Though I do like that reference a lot, especially for the colorful forest. But I have more than this. This is why it's always good to get more reference than you need. So maybe I want to use this misty marsh instead. So I'm going to call this number two um, sulfur. But I believe there's an even better one that I just didn't mark with green. And it's this one from Yellowstone National Park because it's got all these crazy colors in it. It's at a slightly wrong angle, but I love all that kind of sulfury mildew in there. So maybe I want to use that. I'm going to call that number two sulfur. And then I'm going to mark it with green by right clicking on it. And what I love about the Max is that you have your tablet plugged in and you also have your mouse plugged in, so you can use both. Tablet's good for some things, Mac is good for other things. The sulfur water. Here we have the Yellowstone sulfur. All right, so maybe I use that here. It's be an interesting landscape, kind of this pool running behind. I'm going to call that number two, sulfur. And this is new, so I might make a note of it. Sulfur. I'm 
And then I might layer in some of those forest elements. So what have I got? I've got these misty trees here. I kind of like that. So I'm going to call that number three. Misty. And so those misty trees are going to go in the background here. They already kind of make room for the sulfur pool. And you're going to want a lot of overlap between these when we place them. And then maybe I want to enlarge this. This is why we do thumbnails. So I get a little bit of space above so that between the trees, I can see some of this unusual sky as my fifth element, which here would be number four. And maybe I want to use the really colorful Hubble Space Telescope, or maybe even this is a James Webb one. I, I think this might be one of the newer James Webb ones. But of the rainbow universe with so many galaxies in it, it was one of the first. I might be wrong, but I think this is one of one of the early, eh, maybe not, but it's gorgeous, whatever it is, one of those NASA public domain images. So I'm going to put that up here. This is going to suffuse the sky. Number four, universe. Okay, now I have to choose. What do I want to pursue? I'll let you guys choose. Do I want to do the vertical? Mushrooms, rock, temple, trees, galaxy? Or do I want to do the horizontal? Mushrooms, rock, sulfur pools, kind of deader, spookier trees, universe. Horizontal. So hands for horizontal. All right, that's going to be the winner. So I'm going to put a little star by that. Woohoo! And then I might post both those sketches into Canvas because you are required to post your sketch. So it doesn't matter if your sketch is clean or, or messy, but it's always nice to clean up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and crop it using the crop tool. I'm going to go to image and image adjustments. We're going to learn all of this and play with levels. And I'm going to brighten it up. And I'm going to darken the, the darks so it's nice and clear. And then I can even, under adjustments and levels, take away all that yellow reflection from the fluorescent lights. I'm going to go to hue saturation. I'm just going to take the saturation down. So now it's a nice sharp sketch. Helps me see what I'm playing with. So let's save that as, I'll save it as a copy. I want it to be a JPEG so I can load it. And I'm gonna save it as my name. All right, I have saved that, it's right there. So that is now what I'm gonna be working with. I'm gonna mark that with an orange. I'm gonna post that up to Canvas on the assignment. So I've already posted a lot of my initial steps, right? But I can always edit my post. So never be afraid to post process work because remember, you don't want to miss a deadline. I'm going to replace this sketch with my new one. Whether you have both horizontal and vertical, whether you have four sketches of different compositions, whether you just have one, you're required to have at least one. This will help your project immeasurably. Then I'm just going to shrink it to fit a little bit better. And now the next step, now that I have my references ready and my sketches ready, I'm ready to start building it in Photoshop. So let's go back to my sketch in Photoshop. Here it is. Now I'm going to crop down to my chosen sketch. So I'm going to use the crop tool. I'm going to clear any settings it has. I'm going to draw a box around my chosen sketch. One of the reasons I post it is so I can see all of my notes that I might have around it. Because here you just want to close in on the image itself. 
making sure you get all of it, but not having a lot of extra space. I did not draw a perfect rectangle. That is just fine. All right. Then I'm going to hit return. So now it is cropped. Now I need to make this a big enough pixel space that it will print at at least 8 by 10 inches at 300 pixels print. So how do I do that? I go to image, image size. Right now it is 21 by 15 inches at 72 pixels per inch. I don't know what yours will be. It'll be based on your screen grab or based on the photo you took of your sketch. So instead, I'm going to resample. and I'm going to change that to be at least 8 by 10. So at least 8 by 10 would be a width of at least 10, right? And then I see that it says 10, but then the height, because I have the lock on there for proportions, would only be 7.1. So the limiting factor is going to be the height. So the height needs to be at least 8. So the smallest my image should be is 8 by 11 by 300. But my references are good size. They're from Pixabay. So I'm going to go bigger. I'm going to go 350. And instead of 8 by 10, I'm going to go 11 by 14. That's kind of just the next art size standard up. And if you have re image resolution from Pixabay, you're able to go bigger than 8 by 10. So I'm going to change the height to 11. And so it's going to be 11 by 15 by 350. This is changing a file that was only 4 megabytes to now being 59 megabytes. And you'll notice there's a big difference between the things I digitally sketched. This is one of the advantages of digitally sketching. My digital sketches look a little bit softer at the edges, being blown up that much. But my actual... Photograph lines look a lot blurrier. But none of this is going to be in the final. This is just to get the pixel space, the raster space needed for the high resolution images. This is just like uh, having your, your emoji that you brought in and then made better shapes on top of. Okay, to zoom out, you do Command minus. To zoom in, you do Command plus. And to fit it all on screen, you do Command zero. This is a good time to save it. <laughs> so I'm going to say file, save as. And now this is my actual assignment, not just my sketch. And I'm going to save it with my... I'm going to save this as a PSD file, a Photoshop file. Not by typing in PSD, but just by changing the format. Because I need it to save different layers. So if I look back at my folder, I now have something I'm going to mark green. This is now my PSD file that's cropped and ready. And then I have my sketch. My sketch is already posted. And I can always just open that up in preview to refer back to it when I need to. If you need to flip your sketch in preview, just go to Tools and say Flip Horizontal. If you're doing a screen grab and you need to flip the mirror image. OK. Now I go to my references. And I'm going to start bringing these things in. But if I start bringing them in right now, they're going to get all piled up on top of each other. It's going to get confusing. But it does show me I have enough resolution for this, 11 by 14. So instead of just piling them all up on the cropped area, this is what I recommend. This is new. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Image, and I'm going to go to Canvas Size. And I'm going to grow the space around my cropped sketch. And I'm going to grow it to be 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. Why 30 by 40? Because that is the standard size of the largest sheet for professional printing on a four-color offset lithography press. 30 by 40 inches. I'm going to hit Command-0 to put it all on the screen. And that's like putting your collage on your desk. So now I have desk space to arrange my different references. Now I'm going to start bringing them in, just dragging and dropping them in as smart objects, just like we did when we did the, the line art jumble. Not that you're supposed to remember all those steps yet, right? But because we learn through repetition. And I'm going to kind of shrink these smart objects so they look roughly maybe a little bit bigger than they